So, you know, I was a carpenter for 10 years for one company building like Victorian glass glazed sunrooms and a lot of outdoor living improvement. Okay. Very specialty trade. Um, and I decided, you know, uh, I, I was meant for something more, had this hair up my ass, you know, I'm like, dang, man, this can't be it. You know, I was looking at the 65 year old guy working next to me that I've been working with nine years and he just looked miserable. And, um, I just knew I didn't want to do that. So, um, I, and, and, you know, growing up without a, like a father figure, I was kind of always looking and for someone to look up to that also type thing. Right. Um, but I knew that that individual wasn't somebody I wanted to look up to. I just didn't want to work my ass off into, to, you know, physical labor until I was 65 into retirement. So, uh, there was a lady that I built a sunroom for throughout the years. She became a friend. I did a bunch of side work for her. Um, and what happened was she, she always said like, Hey, we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to go into business together at some point. You know, I thought she was joking, but then I, you know, it became something, you know, and, and next thing you know, we're, me and her are going to seminars, trying to figure out what we're going to do trying to figure out what business we wanted to get into. We looked into everything, gemology, oh God, Subway franchise, uh, real estate, just just all these random things that she kind of was into too. And by the way, she was like a mentor figure to me. She had everything that a person would want. She's got the multi-million dollar house on the lake, the yachts, the boats, the jet skis, the sunroom, her own workout gym, all that stuff, right? Right. So I, I seen that and I was like, dang, that's a, whatever she's doing, she must be good it's at working. it. It's working. Yeah. And so I was like, I should probably model and, you know, stay close to her, get in proximity as, as they say. And so, you know, what I didn't know until I got into business with her was that she was really all about the money at all costs. And she really would even, um, treat people like shit to, right. to get the money. But what happened was we ended up going out of all the businesses we looked into, we went into, uh, Black operation marijuana growing uh, business. What's black operation? Oh, legal, illegal. Legal, legal. Yeah, yeah. And we just found a location. Um, you put my carpentry skills to the test. I didn't know anything about it other than at that time I smoked it. You know, I was a pothead. Um, and I built out this operation. Probably took nine months. Put in a lot of the natural gas, my all this stuff, just YouTube and figuring out how to do it. Nine months later, we're running a half a million dollar grow operation. And next thing you know, I'm peddling this shit to people I don't know on the streets by the pounds. Um, and I'm getting shot at and I'm getting robbed. I talk but about- But you're saying it's legal. No, this was 2015. Yeah, I'm glad oh, you brought that up. okay. So this you is 2015. Illegal. Yeah, it was illegal. Okay. So this is right- well, That's not- That's different than a gym business. You know, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so yeah, I guess you that's this an off important. Where note. We're looking for real estate. You mention all these legitimate things, and then we go. You go into an yeah, illegal an, operation. An illegal operation. Okay. Yeah, so I'm glad you pointed that out because yes, I went from looking into an why, actual legal business and. F- why am I so much more interested now that he said it illegal? That's, <laughs> that's, right? that's something's wrong with me that I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, I gotta well, work on that. The importance in that though, the the importance of it being illegal shows you how money driven I became. Right. I literally didn't care about that. Yeah. I just seen money signs and and she was telling me the same thing out of all the businesses that she looked at she already owned real estate at that time for some reason she thought growing marijuana and selling a black market was the way we were going to make millions and i bought into that idea and like i said next thing you know here i am 2015 um right on the verge of where it was becoming legal and the prices were changing black market because of that all these things were happening um, but yeah, I got shot at a couple of times. I got robbed. Um, and then when that happened, I got tired of peddling locally. So I started mailing it like 10 pounds at a time through the mail across the States. And I just got stupid. Right. Chasing money. How, how did you get robbed? You showed up someplace to give them the, the stuff and they yeah. didn't have the money. They just pulled a gun. Yeah. So I talk about that story in, in the first book I wrote. Okay. Um, and I basically met a dude, didn't know he was just telling me where to go. I ended up at a gas station and he showed up with two other people. So now there's three dudes standing by my truck. And I told him, uh, you know, I used to have him get in the vehicle. Right. And then I would show them the product and then they would exchange the money with the product. They go their own way. Well, I told him, I was like, Hey, you guys can't all be in my vehicle. So I was like, have them two wait over there. You can look at it. And so he's sitting in the in the in the um, passenger seat. And I guess there's his brother or cousin or something like that. And um, he's looking at it, right? And I had like, wasn't well, that much. It was like three pounds or something. And uh, he's smelling it. And he's like, yeah, this looks good. He's like, my brother's paying for half. Can you come look at it? And I was like, fuck. I was like, fine. And so next thing you know, I got all three of them standing right by my door with the door open. 
That was stupid anyway. You know, it's a stupid idea to just even go into the business in general. I was going to say, it's a bad idea. It, you know, there's just a bad situation. It's just all bad. Around, right? Yeah, yeah. And next thing you know, he snags it. They take off running. And it was just instinct. You know, I built that not only, it wasn't like I just grew this weed. I built out a 4,000 square foot location to build this and grow it and learn how to do this. So my investment in this whole thing was just, I was like so attached to that. And so my instinct was to chase them. Here I go squealing tires, chasing these guys. And then um, next thing you know, they're, they're, two of them split, go through houses. And one guy just literally, I'm hanging out the window like, hey, you, hey, motherfuckers, you know, like give me my stuff back just because I was just emotional. Turns around, pulls a gun and just fires two shots at me, pop, pop. And it was just so unreal. I've never shot. I've never been in that type of right. um you know, I've, I've been in some, you know, like gangster type situations when I was younger, but never guns involved. Right. Um, and uh, it was just so, so surreal. Next thing you know, I automatically flight or, fight or flight instincts kick in. I leave, park up the road. I'm just hearing sirens go on and then call up my next guy. I'm getting ready to go meet. And I was like, dude, I just got robbed and shot at. He was like, really? Did they hit you? And I... I just started checking my body, you know, cause I, I've seen movies, you know, like, oh, you could be shot and you don't even know it with yeah. the adrenaline. So I'm like looking at my bodies and all these emotions are just going over me. And I look out the window and there's two bullet holes right in the side of my truck, like literally like, right where your, the armrest would be when you're, you're hanging out your truck. Right. And yeah, it just, this rush came over me. I could not believe that it hit the door. I'm looking like, where did they go? Yeah. This uh, is the industry I'm in. I'm getting shot at. Like yeah, I, I could exactly. Be, I could dead, he could have hit me dead in the forehead. All right these now. things coming exactly. I'm just like for a guy running and pulling a trigger, and to be that close. Oh, he's probably that's pretty close. Fifty that's to pretty. sixty, maybe seventy feet away. That's it was pretty, pretty damn close. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, yeah, and I I didn't know what happened. I, it was dark still, and so um, what's what's even crazier is I still continued the night, and and I had two more appointments to go to after that, and still continue. You would think that after that, I would just be like screw this, I'm going home. I didn't, went right. and sold, you know, whatever I had left. But then the next morning, shine a light in the door and find out that it, these bullets, both bullets hit this little half inch piece of metal that kind of guides the window up and down in the door, right. hit it and stayed in the door, thank God. But that's what happened. And so anyways, um, I know that we're kind of going off on a, on no, a side a trail, but it is important. It, it, no one really talks to me about this much other than the only time I really get to talk about that is when I talked about it in the book, but, um, it is important, especially when we're talking about mentorship and how I kind of gravitated towards that and why I got into these type of situations. And I think, you know, just lack of, uh, you know, a father figure and stuff like that, and just kind of chasing money and just being so misguided mm -hmm. as, as I call it, um, got me into those situations. So after two years of doing that, I decided, you know, dude, I, this, I don't want to do this. Like I'm jeopardizing my life, my freedom, you know, I got a daughter, I'm a single dad, like I'm sitting here doing all this. So it was pretty wild, man. Um, so then I pretty much started all over scratch. Um, and I went back to the construction industry. What happened I, to the, the female business partner? I left her. I just you separated. Just, yeah. You didn't sit here, take all this stuff, kick rocks. Yeah, I did. I said, oh, okay. you can have everything. I don't want nothing. Take it. I don't care. Um, my sweat equity in the, in the building that I built out, like we basically converted a, um, a 10, 10 unit RV garage mm -hmm. made it look like a, a garage, right? Phony doors on the front and all that. But on the inside, I, I actually built out walls and, and, and there's, you know, 12 mini splits and right. you name it. It was a pretty massive operation. Uh, so I'm glad I walked away from that. found out that was not the industry for me. Um, and it just, it was just such a intense way of living, man, stressful and all that stuff. So Anyways, like I said, I just started thinking more about, you know, I thought I was thinking about my daughter because I was trying to make a better life with the money part, but I realized like, dang, man, really just chasing money and, and right. for the wrong reasons. And this is all, anyways, that's where I started my own company. And I decided, well, I'm not going to go crawling back to my previous employer. Um, and then my nephew just planted the seed. He's like, you should start your own business. And that's, that's the night I drew my logo. It just, it, it hit me and I was like, wow, okay drew the logo and yeah it's the same logo i've used six years to this day where's the logo um it's i mean i can show you on my phone <laughs> you want to see it yeah all right yeah i love that yeah i thought I figured you would be one of the tattoos <laughs> I, thought gonna, I thought you were gonna pull up your sleeve and be like oh that'd be funny yeah so that's pretty much 
that's pretty much uh, what happened going into that industry, man. And um, you know, I did well for myself in that company, scaled it. And I did through like the honorable way, meaningful connections, like caring about people, donating a lot of time. Um, you know, I, I really, it's right there. Okay. So yeah, there you guys go. Precision patio covers and sunrooms. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for some outdoor living improvement, reach out to us. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how I did it. And here I am, you know, about a year, year and a half in on that company and doing well. And right before COVID. Was it just you or did you have a couple guys? I started you? out with me, just oh, yeah. me. Yep. Doing, trying to wear all the hats, trying to market, right. sell, wearing the tool belt, uh, my taxes, all that stuff. Right. Uh, Google ads, you name it. I was literally trying to learn how to do all that stuff. And I did. Right. And I was. And then um, I did pretty well, started getting a couple employees, you know, and then now it was like three of us, but I was still working on site and then um, quickly found myself um, making some results in the advertising and, and the marketing and getting like a, uh, a local presence there. We had a good reputation. So my phone started ringing quite a bit while I was on the job site. I had to stop and take off the tool belt and answer the phone a dozen right. times. So I was like, wow, I think I need to take it to the next level, get off the job site and maybe have these guys start running these jobs for me. And right. that's where I kind of- bring in more jobs that way and more yep. employees. and Yeah, so that's kind of where I, I started working on the business more than in it, but I still was working in it, but just not much on the labor side and it was just growing and networking and kind of going to um, chamber of commerce, home shows, you know, stuff like that, really right. just getting my face out there. Very active on the, uh, my face is all over that page. Like I, I'm always doing content. So a lot of the customers know, like know me, you know, I'm not just a product and a service. I'm actually a face behind the company and a person that lets you know who I am, how I operate, my morals, my ethics, how I treat my employees. So that was another thing that people liked about me. And, um, you know, that, that's one of the things I share too, you know, now that I coach people in business, it's like, you know, you don't be afraid to show who you are, but, um, going back to that, um, that's kind of how I got into Grant. Uh, my nephew gave me the the uh, 10x rule book, and here I am listening to this guy. He sounds pretty, you know, self proclaimed successful. He's right. uh, he really strokes his own image, yeah. right? And then you see him everywhere on social media and stuff. So it almost kind kind of got that feel. It's like, dang, okay, maybe he is pretty successful. And he, he just says stuff in, in a certain way. Thinking about it now, I can see how it kind of gradually happened. But at the time, I didn't. Um, and I may have had a little bit of fear, maybe a little bit of uncertainty in me as far as what I'm doing. But I, generally speaking, I was scaling and doing well still. And here comes someone like him talking in his books and on YouTube in the audio books I was hearing him saying stuff like, you're not doing enough. I'm like, I'm not. Uh, you're operating at low levels. I'm like, I am. Uh, you're, you know, a disgrace to your family, whatever, all these things, just planting shit in my head. Um, and I'm a pretty, pretty confident dude, even, right. even back then, even though I might've been lacking full confidence for the most part, I knew my capabilities, you know, I've done quite a bit and still he got in my head with that shit. And, you know, I take my accountability myself. Um, but he's got some accountability with that too, man. Like the type of stuff that he says really just frames in a way that you need to chase him for the answers for success. Mm -hmm. He's like a God he wants to be, he wants to be idolized like a God, man. And, um, that's what it kind of became, man. I literally looked up to that dude quite a bit and he hit me with the, the feel stories too, of his dad passing away and, my dad didn't pass away, but it kind of like was that he disappeared when I was three. So I really didn't know him at all. It might as well be dead. So all that, all that stuff really just kind of combined and really had me gravitate. He'd say things like, you need to get in proximity. You got to, you know, those who pay, pay attention. There's all these sayings that, that really get you wrapped up in his organization. And really, it's all about you just handing money over. Quickly, right. quickly find out they don't really care about you. No, I, I was going to say, I, you know, it's funny because obviously you and I, you know, we're very different backgrounds, um, is that, you know, one, just, you know, you know, being not that I'm Grant Cardone, but, you know, being in that whole manipulative, getting people to do what you want, um, uh, kind of mindset and, and then going to prison and being surrounded by guys like that, you know, from, um, and it's not just con men, but I mean, it's like even drug dealers and stuff, you know, 
they're all kind of hustlers, you know, but it's funny being around them. You know, I, be, I feel like I became very in tune with something's not right. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. start talking to somebody and you're like, something ain't right. Yeah. But when I actually got out of the halfway house and I was staying in someone's spare room, I had a buddy of mine um, named um, uh, Steve and he came and contacted me. And he's like, bro, you got to watch this fucking thing with Grant Cardone and um, Jordan Belfort. Ah, yes. And I was like, what is it? He's like, bro, like Belfort makes him look like such a fucking scumbag. And and he's like, and he's not even trying. Like he's trying to help him. You got to watch it. And I was like, oh, well, send it to me. So he sends me the thing and I watch this interaction between the two of them. And Belfort multiple times during that interaction is trying to help him. Like Grant Cardone paints himself into a corner. And then starts to sound like an idiot. Yeah. And Belfort said, is kind of trying to let him get, he's like, well, I don't understand. You mean like, he's trying to give him, I'm, I'm trying to help you get out of this. <laughs> right. Clearly get out of this, <laughs> this corner you've painted yourself into. You got room to correct. Right. Like, like <laughs> let's go ahead and, and admit that you've made, already made one or two statements that are inaccurate. You, you only have to change at this point. You can still get yourself out of it without looking like too much of an idiot. The more he helps him, the more he digs in, the more he digs in, the more unreasonable he looks, the more, you know, of just an idiot he begins to look like. And I was like, this guy is such an overwhelming narcissist. He's unwilling. And even there was even a point when in Grant Cardone's face, you can see it where he kind of realizes he's in a bad spot. Like yeah. I, I'm look, I'm starting to look bad, mm-hmm. and he. And, but instead of saying, you know what, scratch that, or even better than that, this isn't live. Let's redo that, recut that. I don't want to say what I said. I fucked up. I sound like an idiot. Why don't you say that? You can cut it. Nobody will ever have to see it. It's not live. He could have done that. He didn't even realize what he was saying, though. He, really, he, he, he doesn't just, realize how he, he behaves. Right, and so I watched that, and then I was like, who is this guy? And I was like, I wouldn't trust this guy for anything, but. But um, Belfort kept saying, you know, it's funny, there's always these guys in the comment section that are always asking, like, who's the better salesman? And so I thought, well, so this guy's somebody. So then I start looking him up, and I watched a video of him where he was on stage, and he's talking about the people that are in the back of the Ah, yes, I've heard this many times. And he's calling them losers. Yeah, you guys need to be in the front. Right, and then if you're At another $10,000. Right, and if you're not making- (laughs) If you're not making 400,000 yeah, 400, yeah. a year. <laughs> Heard it, it was, all, man. Right. It was like, like you're a loser. And it was like, you just called all of the middle class in the United States losers. People That's that are paying you, him too to be in that room. Right. You just, so the guy that, that the guy that makes 100,000 a year, which is your garbage men who are making 80 and 100,000, which is good money. Yeah. The guy that graduated high school, got a job, the guy that, paints your house, the guy that does carpentry for you, the guy that empties the garbage, the guy that stocks the shelves, the guy that deliver, drives a truck and delivers the food that feeds your fucking children. Yeah. You just called them all losers. And I just remember thinking, this guy is a fucking charlatan scumbag. Yeah. I got to tell you something really quick before I lose this on my mind, though. You're talking about like red flags and him um, not holding himself accountable, right? Um, the first red flag of a leader is is if they are not holding themselves accountable right. or at least wondering their part in the equation on if something dropped. Yeah, you've contributed something. If something yeah. in your organization failed, you contributed in some way. Yeah, and the sign of a good leader usually goes to the accountability of themselves first. Right. They're like, look, I'm sorry. Like if someone invested in me a lot of money or right. did something with me and they're like, yeah, I had a shitty experience, man. Like, you know, I, let's just cut ties or something. I would want to know, or or if they more specifically like me, ask like, "Hey, I'd like to have a productive conversation with you to help you know have you help me make sense of why you thought this was okay, why you treat people like this." Right. I would definitely give them that time. That's the least I could do. Be like, first of all, I'm sorry. What did I do? What can I do? And you know, I, I'm not saying that no one on the receiving end didn't have accountability, but it's not up to the leader to put that. On them, right, and be like, all it was them. your exactly. So, first red flag right there, and I've heard that story many times. Matter of fact, I was watching that one girl's uh, interview that talked about her uh, 10x 360 experience and everything she explained, including stuff like that and that treatment, was the same thing that happened to me. You know, um, which I can explain. We can get into that too, but uh, the way 
you know, not enough is talked about Brandon Dawson, who's Grant Cardone's uh, business partner. <laughs> he's he's just as big as piece of shit as he is, man. Um, but yeah, so going back to my story, where where were we at with that? Um, basically, well, so your 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 cousin or uncle or, or my nephew, nephew gave you a book, and you yeah. started, you started, and a lot of the stuff that he said resonated with you. You started feeling like I can do better, like you know, I I. I do need to buckle down. I do need to do this. I can't. Yeah. Maybe I am operating at low levels. Right. Maybe right. I do need to, right. yeah, invest money and get in proximity and all that. How do shit. I start adding zeros to what I already have? Like at this point, if you've got a structure, how do I just start multiplying it? Exactly. And, you know, I, I've done a couple podcasts on this topic and a lot of the nastier comments mentioned greed and like, oh, you, this happened to you because you got greedy with the money and stuff. And I'm like, it's more than that. It, it, that's probably the at the lower end of the list of reasons why I did that. It was more the the seed planting of the thoughts of like you're not doing the most you can, <laughs> you're doing one x, if mm-hmm. you will. Um, you know, you're you're not fulfilling your what you were meant to do. This whole motivational, inspirational type talk, which could be valuable, could be used for good. Right. But this was just to get me in proximity with him, get me in the room with him so that he could just upsell the shit out of me, out of me and get me in the back of the room to now make me feel like shit that I'm not at the top of the room. That whole thing. I, I went through that whole process. And um, yeah, so I ended up getting in the room and, you know, flying out and going to those events, going to Growth Conference, which is his big annual event where he does have like thousands of people there and he brings all these um, you know, celebrities and, and athletes up that he's paid to go on stage and pretty much talk and, and uplift and insp- inspire. Really, the value I got out of that was just networking. And, and some relationships, um, I managed to actually, I managed to get some decent relationships of people that actually care for others out of that. But for the most part, that atmosphere is just all the same people feeding off the same energy of just wanting money, outcomes. They just are there to just shark hunt and prey on people so um and you're getting upsold the entire time while right. you're eating food you got sales reps coming up to be like hey have you signed up for the uh the uh, workshop yet like five thousand dollars you end on that right i'm not i'm not fucking with you dude why you're eating food the entire time you're right. getting upsold and so it's I, I was gonna say um do you know uh uh anthony robbins right Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would I say Tan- anthony <laughs> well that's his I real name right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh tony robbins i've my buddy Zach actually used to work for him, but I've met a few people that have gone there and they say the same thing. It's constant upselling. But you know, there's like, there are, there are people that go to like all, they, they, they pay to be a part of a, like a president, like the silver group or the, the gold group or the presidential group. And so they get, they, they end up going to these special meetings with him and, yeah. and, and, and for like $50,000 or something right. ridiculous. I have, I have a buddy who basically, was telling me that you don't understand there are groupies there that they bring like pillows and chairs and to sit there because they know they need to be comfortable while they go like and they were like and the thing is is like these people have been doing this for 10 years and they're not successful yeah like this is a real estate agent that makes ninety thousand and spends forty thousand a year on anthony robbins uh tickets and books and been doing it for 10 years yeah and he's he's like and doesn't seem to realize that you're now almost in a cult Yes. And you're not getting the benefit of this whole th- this whole thing. You've been doing it 10 years. Yeah. Nobody talks about that part. Uh the the crazy. nobody being successful part. Uh, it's funny there's this this uh this chick that um been following me and I reached out to her but she talked a little bit about this. She she has a term. She's like coaches coaching coaches to coach coaches. Yeah. And I was like that's exactly what's going on. But uh none of them are successful. I I promise you. I know a lot of them, you can imagine three and a half years um, in that organization being uh, a direct 10X business coach with him and many others and always being in that room and flying out there twice a year to 10X headquarters, very small private room, about 50 of us in there, all coaches, none of them are doing well. Maybe one or two of them out of 50, maybe. Are they making and four, are they doing 400,000 a year? No, 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 they are not. No, most of them are lo- have not gotten their initial investment, which is usually Losers. twenty-five to thirty thousand. Is it, there's a thousand? It's twenty-five thousand to become a, a coach for him, and there's thousand dollar annual fee too. So, and um, they pretty much promote. They it's meant to. It's like an MLM, except you don't 
the only difference is you don't it's not the pyramid scheme so if like there's not you know if you uh, yeah, yeah, recruit yeah. this person and they recruit four you don't others get something out of them yeah it's not that you just get a small commission for uh, recruiting, recruiting someone and then you can sell his products like Cardone, Cardone University and then all the tickets to all like growth con and all that stuff I must have made like two thousand dollars in in the entire time I was working for him out of that that one investment that wasn't the only investment I've spent forty thousand for the three two day 10x 360 event five thousand here ten thousand there I've taken the 10x stages twice I've taken uh, was it um, 10x business boot camp? I've done a 10x business boot camp for Grant in Philadelphia for uh, other business owners. I've been I've been around this enough to know they are not successful. It's all bullshit, and none of them are. A lot of it is embarrassment. There's a lot of reasons why people don't talk about that part. Embarrassment's probably you know it's not fun for people to say. I spent a hundred thousand dollars with this guy and I haven't made shit. Matter of fact, I've lost money. That's right. not fun to talk about. Right. Well, and then um, if you throw it on, if you, if you say that and Cardone gets confronted with it, he says, Oh, that guy, he's a loser. Yeah. He didn't put the work in. Yeah. Yeah. You'll hear all the no accountability goes right, right back to that. Well, you that's know, that Scientology yeah. bullshit, which we can, we can peel back, yeah. which I have only known about for the last month and a half. I didn't know. I didn't even know he was a Scientologist. I didn't even know what Scientology was. The entire time I was with him. He's waiting for, they're waiting for um, Gugamon or Google. Uh, Zenu. Zenu <laughs> to come back on the asteroid or something and bring him to the next level or. Yeah. And drop some more whatever in a volcano or yeah. I don't know. I, I heard it too. I was blown away with the whole sci-fi stuff too. I was like, wow, that's what I was involved in. But uh, yeah. So, whole- so, so you were, so the 10 X you were, you went to, uh, you went to a seminar. It was, you were being upsold the whole time. So then what happened? Sorry, I went to a I'm, 10x. I'm, pull, I'm pulling you off in different directions. It's all good, man. Just reel me back. Um, so we were at. I was at the 10x. My first 10x. And he group. showed up. He go. Is he there? At that. Yeah, yeah. He's at the. Oh, at the annual event. 100. percent He's there. There's okay. thousands of people there. That's his main event. Um, the first. I've been to three. The the first 10x business. Uh, what do you call it? 10x growth conference. That's his biggest event. I love uh, the names. I know, right? It's, That's great. They're all dumb. 10x business summit. 10x 360. We need to work on our names. We need growth. We now need he's to throw growth in there. <laughs> you know? Now he's got to, con, yeah, con's got to be in there somewhere. Now he's got 10x health systems with Gary Brecca and that whole freaking spiel, which don't get me started on that too. Yeah, that's a whole, and I've met Gary Brecca in person before he was even a partner with Grant um, when he had his business in Streamline. So I, I've been around them. Um, so, um, my first 10x growth conference, right? I'm there. And Jared Glant, Jared Glant's his vice president, the blonde dude that's always talking for Grant quite a bit. Um, he's promoting the, at that time, it's it's called 10x, uh, Grant Cardone licensee, which now is called the 10x business coach. Same thing. I think there's a legal reason why they changed that name. Um, not sure, but I haven't looked into it, but there's there's definitely a reason why they did that. Right. Uh, and I heard him t- pitch this program. It was a $25,000 one th- that was mentioned. And I was so into the Kool-Aid at that point myself that I was like, I heard this and I was like, well, you know, I thought Grant had good intentions. I'm like, oh, he's here to, you know, impact 8 billion people or whatever. And, and it's about it, people helping people. That's, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's the message I got. But I, I ignored the signs and the feeling of it not being that. So here I am. And again, going back to those reasons, people are like, why didn't you leave? I was embarrassed. Um, the FOMO, you know, I found a community that I felt like I fit in. There was all these, I'm not embarrassed to admit this shit, dude. Like, like that's what was going on in my head. Right. It was not like it was even on the forefront of my mind. This is just stuff that was going on in the back of my head. And it's clear for me to look back on that now and analyze that and be like, dang, that's what happened. I'm not embarrassed, dude. It happens to the best of them. I was going to say, there's tons of fuck it, tons of people that are, that are, that, that do it and are in it and stay in it. And just like, you know, there's tons of these guys that, you know, especially I think, you know, not having kind of like you were looking for a mentor. You don't really have a father figure. Yeah. You don't really have anybody helping direct your life, which most people do. Right. Yeah. And then, and then this guy comes around, he immediately fills a need, you know, uh, that void. Yeah. So that makes sense. Cause a lot of these people are like that. Mm-hmm. Listen, I got kids that reach out to me all the time. Can I talk to you for 10 or 15 minutes? I'm going through something and I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like, you know, you could help me. And if you could just tell me what to do and I don't know. And it's like, 
Like you're reaching out to me because you watch five videos on me and you think I'm cool and they see me as like a father figure or something. It's like, first of all, I, the fact that you think I'm a father figure, you know, that that's that you've got a whole another set of problems. Yeah. But, but people that, and listen, every one of these kids, no father. Yeah. You know, I believe nobody it. or mom. Yeah. No, no. I had a, uh, you know, my mom's been married three times or, you know, I've had a couple boy. she's had a couple boyfriends and she, it's always like all derelicts. Mm-hmm. And then. You know, for some reason, they connect with me and they want to talk to me. So it's like, there's a void there. Yeah, they're looking a, a for some, yeah. a series of people out there that they, they need that void. Because yeah. honestly, people, especially men, need that. I agree. You know, so. And there's a lack of it too. Right. Oh, and it's, it's, it's getting worse all the time. So, I mean, I totally see that. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't be embarrassed about that. Yeah, and I'm not, you know, but at the time I was, which is why, and then the whole, there's so many reasons. That's why I say there's layers. The ROI, you know, I'm like, I ain't gonna fucking leave this organization until I get my money back. You know, there's all these reasons. Oh, God, right. Just like keeps that's... you in there, man. So when I hear people making these these real quick statements like that, yeah, it's greed. Or, yeah, you don't hold yourself accountable. Yeah. Eh, boohoo. Like, bro, do I look like I'm crying? Do I look like I'm hurt? Do I look like I'm angry? Like, I'm even, not even hating on him. I think, <laughs> this is the crazy part. I think- most people, including Grant, do have a good heart deep down. They're just fucking misguided. They learn the lo- the wrong things. They are jacked up in the head. And I do have a sense of uh, a little bit of compassion when it comes to that. My hope is someone like me calling them out and actually being like, look, this isn't the right way to treat people. This isn't the right way to do business. Uh, you are damaging people. Wake up. I'm hoping that someone that actually has a huge following like that does wake up because they, they have the ability to actually – Real, be real positive. The the truth is, is most like arrogant people and narcissists, you know, are covering for um, a lack of, con- you know, they're, they're covering something. They're up. overcompensating. They're, they're yeah. O- yeah. M- m- more, more often than not, that is the issue is that it's insecurity that mm-hmm. has them behave that way. Yeah. That's why typically a bully, you know, typically a bully, like if you, somebody stands up to him, and slaps them in the face. They don't do anything. Anything. They don't do anything. Yeah. I've seen it happen. I've, yeah, I've been in that scenario. Right. (laughs) Where it's like, yeah, you know, so that's not because they're overly confident. It's because, oh shit, this guy's calling my bluff and there's, I don't really have anything to back it up. Yeah. Well, it's intimidating to the dude that's projecting false confidence and now like, dang, that's real confidence right there. It's intimidating. Yeah. Um, So yeah. Anyways, going back to what we were saying, like I, I, I could see that coming a mile away and now looking back at it, it's like, dang, of course he looked that way. That's the weird... That's the look I seen in him. He's just hurting, man. And uh, that's that's something I talk about a lot, man. You got the, and that's a whole separate topic. You know, a lot of these guys are, are pushing and promoting financial freedom and passive income and all that. Nobody talks about mental freedom. Like for God's sakes, you're in a mental prison. Most of these guys teaching you stuff are mentally jacked up. And if you can't see that, you're going to get sucked into that rabbit hole and get lost yourself. You don't know yourself. You can easily get pulled into an area like I did. And it, and like going back to what we were just talking about a minute ago, it happens to the best of them. I've been in several rooms with self-proclaimed billionaires and millionaires and seeing dudes at the highest level just engrossed in idolizing him and also having that same look in their eye. Just like it's it just it always it caught my attention. I just didn't know what it was at the time. Right. And looking back at it now, it's like that's exactly what it was. These dudes are all just living a phony ass life and not they don't know themselves, man. They're they're just regurgitated robots that sit here and adopt someone else's mindset. Everybody says the same thing. They all just say they say the they same thing. They say the same thing, they do the same thing. And gosh, now I gotta talk about this because you I was gonna say, you know, the only guy I listen to that kind of says pretty much the same thing is uh um Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, I like, like him. I like him. Yeah. You know, I don't like, and he, and because I love that he says on the YouTube videos, he's like, listen, you don't have to come see me. I'm saying the same stuff at these shows yeah. that I'm saying right here. Like, it's, it's only, there's only so much. And I, he's like, do I say the same thing over and over again? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Like, he's not, you know, he's very realistic with what his message is. And he's like, look, you want to see me in person? Great. This is what I, this is, there's an event. You can go. But don't get fooled. I'm not going to tell you anything other than you maybe having the opportunity to have a, you know, me answer a, dire- a question directly to you. You're going to get the same stuff I'm giving you for free on the videos. Yeah, I love so, that. That's authentic. Right. Listen, that to me, now I want to go see you. A hundred percent. You know, it's co- the difference between a guy like uh, Gary V and a guy like Grant and all these other 
self-serving entrepreneurial vultures I call out is that they frame this. These guys over here, you know, guys like, and I'll just name call them. I call them out all the time. Andy Elliott, Wes Watson, Grant Cardone is like the top three people I call out all the time right. because they're out here bullying people. But what they do is they'll frame it and they'll use words like need. Um, you should. Like you need to get in proximity. You need this course. You need to get in the room. You should do this. Gary Vaynerchuk, and I resonate with that because that's the direction I go now, is like, he's really just telling you, you have everything inside of you. Right. You have all the tools that you need inside of you. Just get in touch with yourself, know yourself, all the right like communities, resources, opportunities, all that shit that you used to chase before, that all happened naturally and, and the right moments are going to happen at the right time and you're going to know it because it's going to be an undeniable feeling. Like your conscience is just going to tell you like, oh, okay, this guy doesn't want something from me, doesn't want my money. Um, and it's just going to feel right instead of you forcing that and just like kind of doing this with something that, right. it, you know, and that's, that's what's going on. That's a difference between those two. This guy's uplifting you by telling you like you have it. You don't need to do anything. You, don't, you shouldn't do anything. It's up to you to discern the right things to get involved in. And then these guys are like, you need to, you need, need this from me. I got the answers. Right. Come to me for success. I'll show you the promised land. It's like, that's the difference, man. Right. Well, and like, like I said, and then when it doesn't go well, it's because it's your fault. Right. Well, I thought you had the answers. Mm -hmm. Then it shouldn't it be your fault. You know what I'm saying? And then, but they've they've got that. And the thing is that then they go to bed that night and sleep like a baby on their ten thousand dollar mattress and their you know, <laughs> two thousand dollar you know silk sheets or you yeah. Know. Well, Grant. Oh yeah. So going back to the main point, I was going to bring up that that um, I heard that woman. Um, God, what is her name? Rebecca Hamilton. I'll name drop her. Uh, she did a post about talking about her 10x 360 experience, and that's basically with Cardone Ventures, which is a partnership between Brandon Dawson and Grant Cardone. That's the same course I took. Uh, she mentioned in there, amongst other things, uh, that they are not doing what they say they're doing. And I called Grant on this immediately when I separated myself because I noticed that they were ghosting me. Uh, before I even decided to leave, I was like asking for a refund for the first time ever in three years and, you know, over a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of money. Uh, I bought a diamond ticket front of the room ticket, right? $7,500 per ticket. I bought three of them, one for my 10 year old daughter and uh, stupid, right? What difference, right? Let's just talk about that. Does it make a difference spend 75 Hundred, which was a discount usually to ten k, versus whatever was it a thousand at the back of the room. There was no difference. Right. You're still all in the same room. Nothing happened. Nobody gave me a foot massage or anything up at the front of the room. Nothing different happened. Right, and it's all glorified bullshit. But anyways, my daughter couldn't make it. She had an emergency, couldn't make it. So I was like, hey, she can't make it. Can we? Can I just get a refund off that? You know? And they were like. Nah, we actually can't refund. I was like, that's bullshit, dude. I'm I'm a, not only a 10X business coach, but I spent lots of money with you guys. Um, I think I deserve a refund. Like, oh, okay, well, we'll talk to the higher ups about it. After months, probably nine months back and forth, going back and like, oh, you know, I'm like, hey, did you talk to higher ups yet? Yeah, we're still waiting, waiting. Probably 30 plus emails back and forth. The last 10 emails or so was just me reaching out saying, did you get an update yet? Let me know what's going on. Hey, bro, uh, I haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on? They just ghosted me. Right. Like, I would rather tell have someone like tell me fuck off than act like they're going to do something. Did I just say that in the last podcast I had talked to Did you? Guy. I said the exact same thing. Tell like, me tell no. Tell me to go fuck myself. Something. Don't just fucking not respond. It's so inauthentic to do that, it's man. Not, it, listen, first of all, it's not business-like. You're holding yourself out. Yeah. You're holding yourself out as a professional. Yeah. Behave like a professional. Yeah. That's not D hard. That's not, it's not hard. They could have told me no. They did tell me no, but when I, you know, pressed a little bit more, they could have like, you know what? We can't do anything. I, I, there's nothing we can do. Right. Don't leave me on and then ghost me. First of all, that's something they promote, right? Like, you know, they would never encourage you to ghost somebody. They welcome the haters, right? They like, oh, haters are good. They're all good for this and that. And the next thing you know, they start calling me a hater and calling me a suppressive person, right? As they call in Scientology. Um, all of a sudden, I started getting the real treatment, right? And then, um, yeah. And then I realized like, wow, this is way too many red flags for me to ignore. Um, I think I'm done. And then I, I gave them a um, very 
uh, straightforward yet also professional email saying, I'm, I'm voluntarily leaving this organization. Get rid of my email, uh, discontinue my 13 Cardone University accounts, whatever. Um, in the meantime, I want to invite Grant Cardone to have a conversation with me. I want to know why he thought it was okay to treat me the way he does, teach me the things he has. Uh, I think this is the least you guys owe me. And the next thing you know, they're blocking me on social media. Um, not only him, but like his wife and everybody that is in the organization. It's like, it's a whole, now the cult aspect started coming out of him. Like, right. Why would somebody so confident block me or like, I thought you liked the haters. I thought the haters. And then, yeah, going back to what I originally was saying, though, these guys do not do what they say they're going to do. And that's another red flag of a leader. If they're not operating, if they're not actually practicing what they preach, it's bullshit. They don't have the confidence. They're very unethical. And they're not going to take accountability for anything. And they're, they're, they're just there for an outcome or your money or something. There's an ulterior motive involved with that. Mm-hmm. But uh, a very real thing that's going on right now is just people – projecting and promoting things to do that they don't do themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's not talked about enough, man. All three of those guys I called out do the same thing. It, 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 I related to Stockholm syndrome, um, you know, like making it seem like, you know, talking shit to them, right? belittling them, degrading them. Trust me, I'm all about being direct and firm and calling people out, but I think there's a uh, there's a, a way to uplift people and not in the way these guys are doing it is not the way to do it. Right. Um, so what they're doing is that. They're shaming them, belittling, belittling them, telling them you, your bank account's low, you're operating low levels, uh, you're fat, you're out of shape, um, you're doing the wrong things right now. And then they they turn around and say, I'm telling you this because I care about you. And I'm like, and then they're, and then the people hearing this are like, oh yeah, maybe he does care about me. Then they start getting brainwashed and shit. And then they think that they're actually being cared for when they're really just being bullied and shamed. And now they're just being, uh, it's framed again, chase me for the answers. Like you're doing it wrong. I'm doing it right. I'm your Come favorite. to me. Yeah. And it's Stockholm syndrome is what I call it, man. Like literally they're like, oh, he does care about me. No, pay attention to the signs. Like you can feel when it's right. You can see people's faces too when- they're being told stuff like this, like your your bank account's low, like you're you're disgraced to your family, uh, you're fat, like you could literally see their facial expressions are just like ah, uh, and they're like convincing themselves. So it's a very real thing that needs to be talked about more. Right. Is the bullying part because that's a big key aspect. Oh, and you these can guys tell that when your on, ass when he's on stage talking shit to people that just paid him fucking a thousand or ten thousand dollars just to be here. I didn't come here so you could tell me I'm a fucking loser. Yeah. Um. Hold on. Watch this. Colby, do you know what Stockholm Syndrome is? Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Why don't we need to explain it? Because maybe I don't know the true definition so of Stockholm, Stockholm Syndrome. Syndrome. I think I do. So Stockholm Syndrome is from uh, Stockholm, Sweden, uh, where some bank robbers went in and they took over a bank. And they held the bank for, obviously, I don't know the exact number. Let's say four days, five days, whatever. So now, you know the whole origin story. I love this. Yeah. Now I got to look into it. So what happened is, so whatever, let's say five days later. Five days later, when these guys finally, when the finally the Swedes, and I want to say, it's the, yeah, it was the Swedes, when they finally rush it, right? Like these guys are like, oh, they want a plane. They want like, you're yeah. never getting any of that. So, <laughs> right. But these, let's say, I don't know if it was 10 people or 20 or whatever, but let's say these 20 hostages, these guys are, sent, are calling out to the police. You have to send us, get, bring us in pizzas. We have to feed these people. Bring us in this, bring us in this. This person needs medicine. Get them the medicine. Ah. So what happens is- even though they've they've these people are hostages, they've kidnapped these people. Right, they're also taking care of them. Mm, yeah, and so ten days later, when the Swedes finally say "fuck you guys," we're coming in, and they go in with their SW- their version of a SWAT team. They knock the windows in and they fucking rush in with their guns and everything. Literally, hostages stand up and jump in front of them and say, "No, no, don't kill them! Don't kill them! Don't, don't, don't!" Protecting the protecting. They're kidnappers. Wow. That's wild, so, man. Because in their mind, it's much like a child, right? A yeah. Ch- a child who is beaten by a parent, but doesn't want to be taken away from the parent. Yes, this, this parent is abusing me, but this parent keeps a roof over my head. They feed me. They drive me to school. They're taking care of me. Yeah. Don't hurt my daddy, right? Same thing with a battered woman. You mm-hmm. know, why are you letting this man beat you? Because I love him. 
It's like, and it's not- and he love. loves me. Right, it's Stockholm Syndrome. He pays all the bills. He put, brings home food. He brings home money. He's protecting me. He's taking care of me. The truth is you have Stockholm Syndrome is what's happening. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Um, another example of it is uh, it's a woman who was kidnapped. She's coming home one day with her boyfriend. She gets kidnapped. She's filthy rich. Well, her family is. They grab her. I'll remember it later on tonight, like two in the morning, I'll wake up. Right. Like, oh. <laughs> they take her, they put her in. So this is the, um, the um, I want to say the Black Liberation Army or something like that. If oh, okay. I, I, I probably got the name wrong. And this is back in, I want to say the, I'm going to say the 70s. It's probably wrong. It's probably the 60s. But they grab her, they put her in a, in a closet and they make her read um, uh paraphernalia, not paraphernalia, um, propaganda work okay. about the, the Liberation Army or whatever it's called. They make her read all this 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 uh, par- this um, propaganda for days. They keep her in there. They're feeding her. They let her go to the bathroom. They bring her back. They don't they don't rape her. They don't do anything horrible to her. Yeah. I mean, they're, nothing, they're converting her, aren't they? Absolutely. I knew it. Within about two or three weeks. Now, by the way, her family comes in. They actually, I think they do do a, a drop of food. Like the things that these guys are asking for, like we want you to bring food for the poor and drop it off here. And her family does it. Yeah. But literally, I, I want to say maybe two weeks or two months later, I don't know the time frame exactly, but she actually becomes one of them. Yeah. And they go in and rob a bank. Jeez. She, goes she went in, all in. She goes in with like an AK-47. Wow. And robs a bank with them. Like she's, and she was, uh, oh, ooh, I, I'm so angry that I can't remember her name. But you have to put it in the the comments when you remember. Oh, um, <laughs> That's a very real thing, though. That absolutely, is, and and nobody's talking about that part very, enough. Very quickly, very quickly, they they brainwashed her. It wasn't like it was. It wasn't a massive amount of time. Yeah, they didn't. Have, they didn't have to. They didn't have to harm her physically. Harm her. They simply had her in a vulnerable position, and. She got converted very quickly. So you not crazy. They just wiped out twenty five years of your life mm. and what you know is right and wrong. And in a, a month to, or so, you're robbing. When you put that in perspective people. like that, that is wild, actually. And yeah, like you said, they they didn't harm her, but in fact, they took care of her. And that's it's, that's, that's the crazy. big thing. They they are you okay? Are you cold? Yeah, Do you need to go to the bathroom? Do you need wild, food? Man. Are you hungry? Look, like nobody's gonna hurt hurt you. That kind of thing. So very quickly they. And it's like a, a, a battered child will, um, they will cozy up to their abuser. Yeah. You know, because they think if I get close enough and make this person like me, you know, then it won't, then they'll, and they're taking care of me. They won't abuse me as badly. Yeah. Or I'm trying to garner favor with this person. It's the same kind of mentality. It's survival. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, the fact that it's in this entrepreneurial space is it's almost hard for people to believe that. I, I I brought this comment up several times in the comments on some of the podcasts I did, and someone was giving me some pushback on it. Like, that's not Stockholm Syndrome. I'm like, you don't know what that is, brother. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, that that that's straight up Stockholm Syndrome. If you pay close attention, uh, these people do not care about you. And, and no matter how much they claim they do, um, it, it's it's tough when someone's just like, you're fat. Right, and they're like, I'm caring about you, right? And their tonality's changing, and yeah, you know, it, it's it can be tricky for some. Going back to not knowing yourself, if you don't know yourself very well, and your your intuition, your conscience is all clouded and foggy, you're gonna fight with that. But right. when you know yourself and you're in tune with that shit, it's undeniable. It's like, bro, you do not care for me. Like that is not the way to uplift people. And I can tell. Like I don't care how soft you're talking. I don't care how false compassion you're you're projecting like that's not how you care for people man so i just think there's a more effective way of uplifting people and it's not being done enough and and gary v you, you mentioned you know that's a great example of how you actually should be uplifting people and that's that's what i do i would never tell anybody when it comes to because i coach people in business like i'm about to convert that into three different businesses and i would never tell somebody you need this from me you should do this i went from one extreme to the next dude like i went from what grant teaches which is shove 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 push 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 right. negotiate hard questions close follow up follow up follow up and then some more follow up um i went from that to never even asking for the business that's pretty wild some people won't agree with that and they're gonna be like bro you got to ask for the business i don't think you do 
I don't think people need help making a decision. Like all this shit I don't agree with. Like I'm a big firm believer of providing like massive upfront free value too. And, um, and all that stuff's just going to happen naturally. Like I couldn't, my, uh, my training, I built an online training platform with uh, Bradley over at Lightspeed. I don't know if you know who that is, but uh, he's the guy who actually built everybody's training system I mentioned. Right. Grant Cardone, Wes Watson, and Andy Elliott. So this is, this is what's actually the fascinating part about this. That was the best investment I ever made out of this whole entrepreneurial journey because he's actually a pretty stand-up dude. Um, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, and I, these guys, I'm going to see them in person eventually at these events, whether I'm publicly speaking at this event or we're doing something together. Like, I'm going to see them. I'm like, hey, did you guys not get my... Uh, you know, there's some, there's a bunch of <laughs> funny things happening, dude. I'm like, you know, calling them out to boxing matches and stuff. And a lot of people are like, bro, they would kill you. Right. Oh, they're twice the, your size. And I'm Wes like, Watson. This is the Wes Watson. You're hounding Wes Watson. I've called all three of them out to a boxing match and, and I'm not even a boxer. I've just right. only gotten into it the last couple months, uh, from a guy I met in London, who's who a uh, bare knuckle boxer trainer guy. But, um, I'm just trying to prove a point. They will never step up. They right. all have false confidence and I'm willing to go in the ring. They're like, yeah, let's go. I'm like, fucking perfect, dude. I don't, I'm not even thinking about losing. Like I'm probably going to win, to be honest, even being twice my size, dude. Like anyways, whole side thing. It's almost, that part's just almost comical at this point. Um, but I was really just trying to come out their, their ego and their masculinity a, a little bit. Cause I know that that's all they care about usually. Right. Um, and so they can't hide for too long and me pick and prod at that before they're like, Oh, this guy is all right. All right. He's I, pushed a button. I love the Wes Watson thing. Like he's it, like, it, it's funny because there are these guys that they come on and as soon as they start talking about prison stuff, it's like, <laughs> you know, I haven't been in California state prison, but I'm pretty sure I've met plenty of people that have, and it's not as bad as you're making it sound. And then come <laughs> to find out, you know, then as you, as I started investigating Wes Watson, it was like a lot of us like, okay, this is extreme. Like, People don't behave like you're behaving in any situation, especially not prison. Like you, your own people wouldn't let you behave that way. And then as <laughs> you keep looking into it, you start to realize you were never in California. Mm, it's all like, bullshit, yeah. You were, but then they they housed you in like Arizona and you weren't in a pen, a level four yard. You were in a media. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, like all of the, and you weren't in for 10 or 11 years. You were in for like seven and you weren't like that, you know, and you were in protective custody for a portion of that time. And you were like, all the things that you're saying are false. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I seen those videos where a couple of people really pull, pulling back the layers on, on right. that stuff and, what, and facts checking. I love that. And then his, his people come after you. You're just hating. No, no, I'm not hating. I actually am okay with the things that Wes Watson says. Yeah. The, for instance, I'll give you an example is, um, oh gosh, um, Andrew Tate. Mm-hmm. 80% of what Andrew Tate says, other than his viewpoint on women, you know, on I should be able to have five wives and I should, you, my wife can't do this and can't do like, uh, all right, you're a little extreme. But 80% yeah. of the things that he says where it's like, hey, you know, I think if you're a guy and you're not, you're not getting, attracting women um, or you don't have the job, then, you know, it's not the women's fault. It's your fault. Yeah. You need to start working out. You need to educate yourself. You need to be a, a leader. You need to like you you're, you need to you need to um you need to elevate yourself and change yourself to become the person that is attracted to these women. Yeah. So that's true. You know, like like I'm you know He t he turned me off when he said uh God, I don't know if you've seen that video. He was just like talking about like I'm above you. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. better than you. Like I said, just get in line and follow eight, me. Like I said, that part really rubs yeah. me wrong. I'm like this guy's full of 80%, himself. 80%. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you're not going to agree with everybody for right. anyway. That's yeah. just reality. Right. So. I mean, there's lot, there's lots of people that it's funny. Cause, um, you know, like, uh, oh, I shouldn't even say this. Um, <laughs> but like, for instance, like, um, uh, you know, Donald Trump. Yeah. Right. Like he was at a growth con. Was he? Yeah. He spoke. <laughs> um, so Donald Trump, like, honestly, like his politics, I'm okay with his politics. I like his politics. Donald Trump as a president speaking, horrific, <laughs> horrific. Right. And then again with Biden, you know, there are parts of Biden. I like that Biden is hard on China. 
You yeah. know, I like that there's so, you know, I don't think we should be in all these wars, but I like the fact that he's standing <laughs> A little bit up. less war. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I, I think he's giving too much money to Ukraine. I think there's some things, but I do think you need to support democracy. So there's some stuff, you know, then there's a thousand other things that I'm not okay with. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. And, and honestly, he's just, he's a, he's an old man. He's falling apart. And, and I, and I feel bad. Uh, I, yeah. I hate it when they're vicious towards him. It's like, hey, bro, like I get it. I do believe that there's a lot of corruption there. You know, yeah. I, I do believe a lot of these things are corrupt, but all, honestly, he's still just a feeble old man. Like, can, can we not make right. too much fun? Like, a little compassion. Yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah. I'm not saying you're right. You're right. He shouldn't be president. He's too old. He's not mentally capable. Like, all that's true. But can yeah. we at least not be a dick about it? Well, that goes back to what I was saying earlier is like, you can be, that's the way I come at people, man. It's like, I'm very direct. Um, some people without they, them actually paying attention to the full video or clip or something, they'll just see something and be like, dang, this guy is fucking rude hateful, direct. I'm like, nah, if you pay attention, I got compassion still. I mean, I've just proved, I talk, I talk about Grant even having a good heart. Right. Most of these dudes, I think, like I said, they're just deceived, lost, or deteriorating in right. Biden's or, example. Like, or Wes Watson. It's like, I don't mind what he's saying. I'm okay with- there, There's most, some good in there's there. There's some good in there. And he's probably helping. Some people need someone to kick them in the ass. They yeah. do. You know, And that if that's your guy, that's great. You don't have to lie about it. Yeah. Well, like, also, he's very aggressive with the bullying shit. Oh, I don't know if you follow oh, Baller you, Busters. Did, did you, you follow, I, I, bu follow that? Um, the, I think it's a podcast, right? Baller Busters. They call out Wes Watson quite a bit. Baller Busters. I probably am. They'll post one-on-ones that are recorded from him talking to somebody oh one-on-one. -on -one, and he's just like, shut the fuck. Yeah, just so rude. You, yeah. You're I would never bitch. pay to be talked to like that. Like, just, like guys are, <laughs> I had a guy that came to me and said, bro, listen to me. And on Instagram, he hit me up. He's like, listen, I will pay. He's like, I paid to, to talk to Wes Watson for like 30 minutes or something. I forget what he paid, 300, 200 to pay. And Wes gets on the phone and he said, he literally in the first four minutes called me a bitch 15 times. Jesus. He said, hung up on me twice, told yeah. me I was a loser, <clears throat> like the whole thing. And then he said, Matt, I am, I am, I will pay for you to talk to this guy for 30 minutes if you'll video it. I think it would be hilarious. And I was like, Did you? <laughs> no, I never oh, did. Oh, man. I've had other guys in the comment section saying, Bro, I will contribute if you'll do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, like, <laughs> it, it, That's pretty funny. It, it like, is, I'll pay to do that. It is That's totally funny. Bullying. It's, yeah. He calls people names. He goes, Like, listen, if you can't speak to someone like an adult, right? You know, nobody should be following you. And you know? here's the real here's the real thing. Um, that's just fear based stuff anyway. And people don't, in my opinion, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. People don't change based on fear. They'll, they don't they don't make permanent changes. They'll only temporarily change just to get out of that fearful situation. Situation. But if they haven't done the internal work and worked on themselves, they're usually going to relapse and go back to the same person they were before. Yeah, I, in my I opinion, that. that whole fear-based shit is only temporary, and it doesn't actually change the person on the inside. You, you know what's funny? I heard this quote from somebody. I can't remember who it was, but and I thought, boy, the way they said it, I thought, wow, that's absolutely right. And they said motivation is like food. You know, it, it you know, initially it's it cures that hunger, but it has to constantly be renewed. You know, mm, yeah. So, and that's true. How many times have you watched some motivational video, a little ten-minute video of people, famous quotes, or doing that, or whatever, whoever it is? Yeah, you're Gary V. Seven minutes in, you're like, man, I'm ready to go. Yeah, and you hang up. But then David like, Goggins, exactly. But maybe it lasts a couple hours. Maybe it lasts two days, and then it's you're now you're hungry again. So you have to constantly renew that. People are different too. Some right. people operate at those levels naturally, or they've change to be that and they are that way naturally some people just aren't meant to be that you know one time i had a um when i owned my mortgage company i had a chick that literally um her name was susan and susan for the first six months that she worked for me was not a great broker she just mm -hmm. wasn't she's closing one loan a month maybe two and and she's then the next month she's coming in she's asking me if she can borrow a thousand dollars and she'll pay it back when on the next loan which is going to close on friday i'm like that's fine that's fine susan never came in on time always took off days always left early and and it was always and the excuses were always you know not that she really owed me an excuse like she's got a desk and if you're making if you at my place if you were closing one or two loans you were carrying your weight you okay. sucked 
you weren't doing great. Like you're not a superstar, but you're, getting by. It's, it's worth the desk. It's not like I have. <laughs> it's not like I have desks that are available. I mean, that are are. Um, you know, all the desks are f- full. It's not like people were, were um, trying to get in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's fine. You're closing a couple a month. That's fine. You, every once in a while, you get behind. You got to, I got to catch up, you know, give you money for your mortgage or whatever. That's fine. Six, and but multiple times she would come in and she would say, you know, oh, my friend so-and-so is having surgery and I'm going to have to take care of her. Okay. Uh, oh, I need, I'm, I'm, by the way, Matt, I'm going to take off Thursday and Friday because my friend so-and-so were loading up all of her stuff on Thursday. And then Friday, I'm going to help her move. And then, you know, you know, and then over the weekend, I'm going to help her. So, so I'll be back on Monday. I was like, okay. I'm like, I mean, she can't pay movers to do that? No, she doesn't really have any money in it. Okay. You know, and there's, it was constantly little things. Always something, Every yeah. few weeks. Volleyball. Like vol- she, she was the volleyball team captain and she had to arrange this or me and my friends are going to this and I arranged whatever and I have to, okay, that's fine. So, <laughs> you know, what do I care? Like I was making good money. I don't want to give a shit. So one day I, she had gone out with my wife and they weren't like super good friends or anything, but there was a group of girls that went out and she invited Susan and a couple of the girls at work, you know, and they all went out and my wife got drunk. And so this is my wife, my ex-wife. She brings her home, you know, I, you know, throw in the bed, go back downstairs. Susan's down there. This is late. It was like a fucking 12 or one in the morning. Mm. And we're sitting there talking. Uh, Susan and I are sitting in the kitchen talking. And I said, and keep in mind, many, many times, every time she would, she would come in and get a check and, hey, can I pay you back 500 of that and 500 on the next one? Because, of, yeah, yeah. And I would try and I'd give her a little motivational speeches you know, you know yeah Susan, if you do this, <laughs> it's gonna cost you a motivational speech yeah. if you, you know susan if you just come in more often if you would just do this if you would this if you would kind of put your heart into this job you know you'd make a lot more money you wouldn't have to borrow money from me and it's not that i'm i'm complaining it's that i just i just know you're you're better than what you're than barely making your bills and sometimes not even doing that yeah so um I'm sure she wasn't happy doing that all the time either. It's not fun, you know, constantly well, I being in that situation. I feel like she, most of her life, she'd probably been like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you heard yeah. how she was raised and, you know, everything, you realize like she's always been somebody at, at that point in her life who'd always been like lower middle class struggling. Yeah. Fine. So what happens is we're sitting in my kitchen, we have this talk and we have a talk and I'm like, you know, Susan, I go, the thing is, and she was, so, so I remember she was, she's like, by the way, I know that I owe you this much money on um, Friday. This is closing. So that I was like, I, I know, I know. Like you can't not pay me. The checks come to my business. Like I'm going to get my money. <laughs> yeah. So I know that. Don't worry. I know where you're going to pay me, um, and I know everything you're working on. And if you left, I just close those loans myself and pay myself. So mm. you know, I'm not worried about lending you the money. But and I sat there. And I said, you know, Susan. I said, I don't. I said I don't understand. Like you're smart. You are a salesperson. I've heard you on the phone. And she was a bulldog. Like she was a. a she was a. She was tough. You know. Yeah. She wasn't like the, a, a fucking uh, flower or something, you know, soft flower. Like she would get on the phone and argue with people and yell at them and this and that. Well, I want to talk to the underwriter. No, 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 no. You know, just she was like, wow, okay, she's, she's gone. Oh, she's getting this thing closed. Well, that's fine. I'll go somewhere else. You know, a country where I can do this. And, you know, she's talking them down on the interest rate. And, mm. you know, well, you need to relook at this because if you check this out and this and this, this is how much money her, what her DTI is. And she's literally like, so we're talking. I said, you know, I said, here's the thing. I said, you're a great friend. And she's like, thanks. I go, no, no, not to me. Cause we're not friends. You know, I'm like, like I'm your employer. You know, we don't go out. Yeah, right. So I'm like, you're a great friend to all of your friends. I said, but you know, if you started coming in and getting there at nine, the minimum yeah. nine, like that's not, I'm not asking you to come in at eight. God yeah. forbid. <laughs> you came in until nine and worked until five or six, five days a week. And left your cell phone on and took phone calls after hours. Yeah. You would probably be closing four or five loans a month. You wouldn't have to borrow money from me. Not that I care. I said, but what bothers me is this, is that you took off three days last week to fix your car. Because her, she, her father ran a junkyard and she could, she could change a fucking transmission. You know what I'm saying? Like she drove around in her car. She had like a carburetor in the back of her car. She sounds like a rugged one. Yo, yeah, she's, yeah. You know, she's yeah. capable too, it Very sounds capable. like. And I was like, you know, you took off three days to change this. I said, do you, do you understand that? I said, and then you, you, your, your friend so-and-so in the moving. Yeah, I said, do you understand that if you were closing five, four or five loans a month, you could have paid for movers. 
which she would have preferred to have movers than two chicks trying to uh, um, pick up a U-Haul, load it and unload it. I, I assure you four men would have done that job better and yeah. you'd have been done in a day. Yeah. You could have paid for that. Your friend who had the boob job, hell, you could have paid for a boob job. <laughs> your friend that she had to take care of that was having surgery. Yeah. You know, I said, I said, your car that you spent three days on when you could have been working, if you'd worked those three days, you'd have closed, probably have closed another loan, made yourself $2,500, and you could have paid a mechanic to fix it in a day. Yeah. And gotten a rental car. You said you took off three days. I'm like, let me put it to you this way, because this seems to be your motivation. You would be 10 times the friend you are right now. Uh, if I you see. would focus on making money because money will fix all of these problems that seem to be detrimental to your career. Mm -hmm. Making that money would make you a better friend. You think she was people pleasing or she actually cared about? I don't the, think like, she, she's, she's a very, very nice person. Okay. You know? And she was a ple people, well, to a degree. She never once tried to people please me. But <laughs> um, Everyone but, but you. <laughs> so I had that conversation. I said, I just wish you'd think about it. So she was like, all right, well, yeah. And she had this weird look on her face. No big deal. She leaves. I didn't know if I had offended her or what. So the next month, she closed four loans. Ah. She made like 10 grand. Okay. Right? The next month, she closed six fucking loans. One of the loans, by the way, was like a $15,000 broker fee. So I end up cutting her a check for like almost 20 grand because I take took like 30% of the fee. Um. So it was like, you know, plus the four loans. The next month, it's six or seven loans. Yeah, she was, she's killing it then. Fucking crushing it. Huh. So when she came in, and I remember I was writing her a check, um, I said, man, you are fucking killing it. And I was like, you know, of course I'm thrilled she's making money. She's making 20 grand. I'm making six. Yeah, it's you know what I'm saying? Good for like, everybody, yeah. Right. So I cut her the check. And, and when, I, when I told her that, I said, man, I said, you are killing it. And she said, well, she said, I mean, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's because of you. And, and I went, what? And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, well, because you gave me that, that, that talk. Remember when I brought you know, Kayla home? And I went, what did I say? <laughs> and she goes, you told me that I would be a better friend to my friends if I would focus more on work. If I made more money, I would be able to provide more and be a better friend to my friends because I'd have money to help them. Yeah. And I thought, of all... All the stupid things that I had said <laughs> over the last six or seven months of, of while she had been there, of all the all of the motivational speeches that I gave her, like you could get a brand new car, you could get a nicer house, you could get this, you could get that, all you could help, this, all of those things. It was an offhanded one minute conversation. I'd had her, I'd kept her in my office for 20, 30 minutes trying to get this chick to start working. working. One, a one minute conversation dramatically changed who she was as an employee. And that's what, so you don't know. That's why I'm saying Wes Watson. Periodically, some people get motivated by different things. So maybe he says the right thing to the right person and that's what does it for them. Yeah. So, yeah. I've heard people say too, that like some people need, I was talking to my friend, Steve, and he said that it was like, some people need to be talked to like that. I'm like, yeah, I can. Maybe, I don't know. Um, do they need to? I personally think you could still get to that person um, being direct, firm, straight up, and also just have the compassion on it. Right. Uh, yeah, the way, but you're right. Going back to what you said, it, sometimes it's just a matter of someone else saying something and or someone else saying something differently. There's so many factors in that, right? It could be right. tonality, because I've, I've heard a lot of the same stuff well, that well, Grant even said before I heard him say it, and, but for some reason. But what motivates you isn't necessarily going to motivate me. Yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah. and, and so I, I, something just happened to stumble into the right thing for her. Yeah. What's funny is um, I've had an experience with all three of those dudes, right? And, and, and I didn't just like all of a sudden start calling Wes Watson out. Like we were talking in the, the DMs and uh, he was... God, what did he do? He pitched me something. Usually I send somebody just a personal video. You might've gotten one from me. Right. Probably yeah. that's usually what I do with everybody. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll take the time to actually hit him with the real video. And I did that with him undoubtedly. And he responded like, Hey, let's, uh, let's scale your coaching program. I think is what he said or something like that. And I was like, Oh, you mean this coaching program? And I texted him, you know, my actual built out interactive training system that I've already invested 30 K in. Right. It works fantastic. And there's really nothing else out there that, that beats that. Right. And not only that, it's the same system he already has with Brad Lee. So it's the same partnership. I was like, you know, Brad Lee also created this. And it was ghost town after that. 
literally you, just you, cut me off. You and don't, You don't have a benefit to him anymore. Exactly. But he was all, and I don't even know if it was him, could be someone running his Instagram, most likely. Uh, someone told me that he's sitting there on his phone all the time doing all that himself. And I'm like, I don't know if he's, that's that's real. Well, I but mean, if, if it was, that's even worse. I mean, the fact that you just, once once you find out you're not getting any anything from somebody, you're just like, yeah, I'm done with this. Like that's that's just immature as shit. Well, um, I don't, you know, but that's when I started calling him out. Um, that was months prior to me actually leaving Grant Cardone and all that, and I just came back to him and I was like, "Hey, what's going on? I'm gonna re reconnect with him." It was just ghost town, and, and then I started watching his posts and I started analyzing him a little bit more. I was like, "This guy's full of shit." Mm-hmm. Like he's just yeah. So, anyways, but yeah, your to your point, yeah, maybe some people get off on that, but I honestly truly believe that even the ones that feel like that that's the way they need to be talked to, I don't think they truly change. Uh, long-term permanently. I think it's more of just a momentary, temporary solution. I think you really got to do that internal work. And, and someone like, my my also another part that I believe is I can look at Wes Watson, Grant Cardone, Andy Elliott. These guys have not done the internal work, right. meaning this is all projection, lost leaders with false confidence in my opinion. And so if you're learning from someone like that, you're probably going to be the same way, meaning right. you're not going to have true confidence. You're not going to really know yourself. You're just modeling and mimicking. You didn't know yourself to begin with, which is what attracted you to that. And so now you're pretty much adopting a thought process and a mindset that someone else created for you. Right. And you're not even thinking for yourself. Right. And that's my opinion. I think that's what's going on quite a bit right now. And that's what happened to me. And I see it happening to everybody else as well. And like I said, going back to being in several rooms with, Many, many, many successful, well, quote unquote, perceived, self-proclaimed millionaires and billionaires. Um, I could see the same thing happening to them. They're all lost. They've all um, got just as deceived as the person that's, you know, making fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. I was gonna say I, I always love the guys in the comments who are like, "Well, you're just jealous because <laughs> they're making money and you're not." Well. Yeah, and I'm sure I could make money. I could make money just like them. Yeah. If I was willing to lie and cheat and steal from people. Like, listen, here's what I know. I know that doing that in my past life is what led me to prison. Yeah. And you cannot go to prison and continue to behave in the same manner that led you there and get out and not expect to come back. Oh, so yeah. While I was in prison, I decided I can't behave this way. And 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 if I if I'm if I live in somebody's spare room the rest of my life, then I'll live in someone's spare room the rest of my life because I'm not going to live my life like that. Yeah. But by getting out and having that mentality of saying, "Hey, you're going to be humble," and I'm I'm not very humble, but I work on it. So you're you're going to be humble and you're going to be appreciative of everything that you have, and you're just going to try and and work hard and and be thankful, be be appreciative. Yeah. You know, and if if that's what your life is, well, that is better than prison. And it's better than being the person that you were that ended, ended you up in prison. Exactly. So, but the moment I started, I got out and I behaved that way, like nothing but good things happened. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like a hundred percent. You know, and and not that everything I do has a benefits me because I do tons of stuff every single week that don't benefit me. You know, I'll yeah. do something and I'll I'll, I'll answer texts for people and answer their questions and talk to them. And there's no benefit to me. Yeah. yeah. Like if I, you ask me about your credit or, oh, well, here's what, Matt, can you do this? I, I don't know what to do in that situation. Or oh, here, here's what I would do. Or some guy saying, hey, you know, my girlfriend broke up with me. Here's what's going on. Boom, boom, boom. I was just wondering, I'd reach out to you. I don't know that you're going to answer me, but what I was like. Listen, bro, here's what I do. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Not and, a therapist, but I'll tell you my right. my, my approach. <laughs> right, right. And, and then like two hours later, like, bro, I can't believe it. She's on her way over here. Like I, I sent the email almost exactly what you told me and she's on Hopefully her way Hopefully that's over. the best case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> might have just got, yeah, you might have just jumped you, in the, exactly. into, the, into the fire. Right, Hopefully you didn't get him five more years right. of hell. <laughs> there's no benefit to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, And so that's what yeah, kills me about the Wes Watson. Like as soon as he saw there's no benefit, like that's short-term thinking. That's self-serving behavior. Right. And um, yeah, a couple things that are coming to my mind before I lose these thoughts. Back to what you were saying. Um, you Those statements, like you're just jealous, you're a hater. Yeah, these guys don't have time for you. They're multimillionaires. You think they're going to have time to respond to you. All those type of statements are all just made to, and created to to for these people being called out like I'm doing 
for them never having to step up and and defend their false confidence. Right. It's all just barriers to protect them. Right. They're just haters. Right. Yeah, I don't got time for all that. All of it is bullshit. Like it is is all just and what's cool is you cannot say that about me. I've got several businesses. I've made money. Um, you know, I've made, um, I've sold millions. I'm not going to say I've made millions because a lot of people get that confused. Right? right? You're saying you're a millionaire? No, I'm saying people don't don't understand business. Just because I've sold multiple millions doesn't mean I pocketed multiple millions. But I've done well for myself. Let's put it that way. I've. You can call me whatever you want, successful if you'd like. But I've done well for myself. I'll say, um, I don't need to worry about their opinion of me and right. I'm not a hater. I'm not, I don't even want anything out of this. Like my, I don't have an agenda other than to just share my experience and let people discern these things I'm talking about. Like just pay attention is all I'm saying. Like there's red flags that are coming up for you and most people ignore that. And I'm just saying like, wake the fuck up is all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. If you want to hear my story personally, I'll share it with you. And then obviously podcasts like this, uh, it's great for me to talk on as well. But yeah, people try to put me in that box all the time, man. But I've made investments, like I said, with Bradley. So I got a, you know, a, a partnership essentially with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done smart things aside from this, uh, what would be not a very smart thing with getting involved with Grant. But the other thing I'll tell you about uh, before I forget this too, um, I can't remember what we were talking about earlier, but it brought this thought up. You got to think about how crazy this is, man. The entire three and a half years I was with Grant Cardone, all the shit I was chasing, man, money, um, people, opportunities, everything I was chasing literally fell in my lap. I'm not kidding you. In two weeks after I left that organization. Like all this, I was waiting on a large sum of mo- uh, lump of money for like three years that fell right in my lap in two weeks. People I've been trying to get a hold of, like high profile people for like five years, all of a sudden got a hold of me. Just like opportunity after opportunity just kept happening over and over and over. And I wasn't even chasing it. I wasn't even, I didn't even want it. It was just, it happened to me and I'm just purely grateful at this point. And it's, it's a whole new way of living, man. And, um, you know, a lot of people I've, I've said that to, they're like, ah, I'd worry, man, it's coming too easy. There's something going on there. I'm like, what am I worried about? Like, I'm pretty stress-free. Like, I'm not, I don't think I'm above all that. I don't think I can't be fearful of stuff or the uncertainty doesn't still try to get in my head. The difference is it just doesn't feed on me. I don't feed or into that shit. I recognize it and it's literally like 1.2 seconds, the switch gets flipped and I'm like, I know myself. Like, I don't even have to worry about this stuff. Everything is is happening. It's just happening. It's all natural, organic. But how wild is that? Like literally all that stuff I used to chase literally in, in years all came to me in a couple weeks. Right. It was quite mind blowing actually. It's that mental freedom I talked about, right? It's not being talked about enough. And when it comes to entrepreneurialism, it's all about financial freedom and passive income. Like you have no business thinking about financial freedom and passive income until you get this mental freedom under control. Like, get out of the fucking matrix that you're in. Right. Don't talk about it and act like you know what it is. Realize what it is and get out of it. Like, wake the fuck up. Listen, I do. I mean, we'll we'll wrap this up, but I do want to say, um, <laughs> um, how long has this been? I don't even. I don't even know what two hours has what? it. Really, see what I mean? <laughs> what, what, what were we talking about? Uh, Andrew Tate. I love. I do love that when he got arrested and he's walking, they've got him handcuffed and he's walking by the cameras and he goes, it, "The Matrix has come for me." Like I was uh, like, "Wow, he, did, <laughs> he he really believes all that." Like he didn't he didn't break um, character at all. Wow, you've been handcuffed. Your house has been raised. They've seized all your shit. They're walking you into the police station and you look at the camera and go, "The Matrix has come for me." That's interesting. And I thought, "Wow, yeah. this guy's all in." Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about him, man. And well, and he's big on the Matrix. Like you know, the, the, basically, it's like the his the his version of the Matrix is like the dark state. Like they're hmm. they're monitoring you. They're like, they want you to think a certain way. They want to control you. They want. Well, I mean, he's 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 on to something to a certain point. It's more right. than that, really, actually. But yeah, I, I, I hear what I, you're saying. It, it was just hilarious, bro. Yeah. I thought. Yeah, yeah. He's not even concerned. I mean, he's concerned, but he's not breaking character at least. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like he's got confidence yeah. so and whether he's delusional or just misguided i mean definitely a little bit of that narcissism you were talking about earlier i mean when i hear him talking about yeah i'm better than you just get in line just follow me bow down to me type shit i'm like dang this guy really is yeah, like i said 
Eighty percent. You lost me with that. I don't think I know. I've never. I don't think I've ever met anything, buddy. That I'm a hundred percent behind. You know, there's and, always something. You're like, mm. and that's the reality, man. Like, that's a whole another. Con- Again, this is why these conversations go so long, right? That we live in in a, in a in a day and age where confirmation bias is a real thing. Like, if you're not hearing what you want to hear, right? You don't even give people the time of day. You start calling them haters. You start doing all that shit, and it's like, if you can't have a per- like. If you're just living in a world where you want to only hear what you want to hear, you're missing out on so many opportunities. You're missing out on possible friendships. You're missing out on productive conversations. Like to think that it's only worth your time to talk to somebody um, when you're just in 100% agreement with them, that's a lonely world to live in, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, you start treating people like shit. There's just, there's so much bad that comes with that. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Please consider joining my Patreon. It really does help. Also, check the description. We're putting the all <laughs> of the links to Instagram and YouTube in the description box so you can click on them and go over and follow and subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. See ya.